Good morning, evening, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Week Ahead Outlook. Sorry I missed you last week. Um, I wasn't in front of a computer. I was in a car. But I'm here this week, so um, let's get right to it. Uh, you know, a lot of news out over the weekend, and, you know, this started kind of hitting the most of the major news outlets pretty much started Tuesday or Wednesday of last week where people are getting concerned about the increase in number of cases in uh, some of these states that exited their lockdown early. Florida, Texas, um, South Carolina, Arizona. So there's been you know a decent uptick um, through the seven-day moving averages of number of COVID cases. There were some somewhat melodramatic headlines on over the news outlets about hospital hospitalizations. I think it was Dallas or Houston uh, where they're at 80% of capacity. Blah blah blah. Um, we you know, we've been following this very closely for the past couple of weeks, and I think you know, some are calling it a, a second wave. I don't think we're it's the second wave at all. Second wave, if there is a second wave, is more like fall in the Northern Hemisphere. So call it October, November. Um, you know, I think these are states that are just... Uh, just still really collecting data from the, the first wave. And, you know, there's been increased testing and obviously the case count. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, locally here in, in the Midwest, I've heard of um, more people testing positive, um, more people getting tested. You know, most of our friends are looking to get tested. I, uh, being one of them, uh, I think I'm going to go in and get tested later in the week. Um, just out of curiosity, and there have been some uh, some teenage cases of kids testing positive the past couple of weeks, and they you know they're testing positive, but they don't really they're not sick, so uh, I don't think it's really anything to be concerned about. Um, and I think the correction that we saw midweek last week is you know. Could be something to do with Powell's dour outlook on the economy uh, during the Fed presser um, and the exuberance that we've seen out of the day trading Robin Hood crowd, where they've got a little bit of, you know over their skis, and um, and then you know you see you, the sensationalism of the press, um, you know it's clickbait really where. You see a headline on Bloomberg or your iPhone goes off with news alerts about, you know, increased in number of positive cases and it gets people um, to hit the sell button, really. And so I think that's what we're seeing. Um, having said that, I think we are due for a deeper correction. Um, let's start out here, get to the charts. We'll do equities and we'll take a look at um gold and silver and, uh, and then we'll go into the currencies but there were some obviously some big moves you can see the big the big down red bar um which was thursday and you know this is coming from an all-time high close here on wednesday the 10th and then we open and and really i think it was about a three standard deviation event in uh in that and you know we'll look at the vix as well but um take a look at this I, I put this, I added some retracements because, you know, I think we need to start looking at, you know, where things could pull back to. Um, but look at this. This is just a simple 20-day moving average. Um, so we tested it in early May, mid-May, late May. Each time it held, we got down, we tested again on the big sell-off. We had kind of a, you know, doji reverse all day on Friday, and then we are opening up, um, and this is exactly what we expected. We went home short over the weekend. I mean, it was just, you know, they ramped it up. There was a 
1 billion market on close, buy order on Friday. Um, there were some headlines late in the day that reversed the equity weakness and, um, and the, you know, closed slightly positive on the day, uh, still down five plus percent for the week. And you can see here today we're, we're opening lower, um, and under this 20 day moving average. So this has acted as, as good support the whole way up. And, um, you know, it's too early in the day. You know, the, the market's only been open for three hours while I, when I'm recording this. Um, but, you know, some of the retracement areas, you know, only a, a third retracement is 8,800. So that's 750 points lower. And you can see there's some highs somewhere like 88, you know, 8,800 to 9,000. Highs and lows, kind of a lot of, a lot of action there. So um, if this is indeed the start of a new uh, correction, um, that would be my first spot of um, support, somewhere around 8,800. And the SPX, um, I drew the retracements there. So we, we have broken this uptrend line. I think it's a pretty good line. There's a bunch of touches. Um, that's now below the 20-day. Um, it closed below it on Thursday. It rallied back up and tried to test it on Friday. Um, I remember Friday morning on the open, I think we were up about 2%, 2.5% on the open. Um, I don't really know why, but we were, and um, we were short, and we were worried, and then, and then kind of turned around. But it did hold in, um, held in pretty well. You know, obviously an inside day after you have a bar like this, big down bar on Thursday, you, you know, there are a lot of times you get these inside days. But then we like to play the breaks of that inside day. So the market's already done that for us. Um, it gapped open a tad lower. This is the CFD, but gapped open a tad lower. Um, it's down about 1.5%, um, 29.92. We're below that 20-day, which did not was not as good as the NASDAQ. But either way, it's you know it's a decent measure. It's kind of like a one-month moving average. Um, so we are we are back below there, and we are taking out Thursdays. We did take out Thursdays low, um, 28, 29. Uh, I think it was it was Thursdays low, 29.98, I guess, in the CFD. Um, I think it was 29.80 in the uh, in the futures. But bottom line is we're we're now trading below that. So we like it down here, anywhere between 28.30, and then. Kind of this low looks pretty important. This reversal day, which is 27.65, so I think a lot of technicians are looking for a pullback to that area. Um, you know, and I think we could see that over the next next few days, especially if we keep getting these these case counts, because the market just hits a bid now when they see an increase. Um, you know, in Texas or California, Arizona, but any of these states. Um, VIX. Let's take a look at VIX. I just want to show you this. You know, we had a massive move. It was like a 40% move up on Thursday. Um, made a new marginal high. That would have been um, probably in Asia on Friday, the start of the trading day, and then reversed, um, you know, pretty dramatically. So, um, you know, this is not open at this point, at least not on trading view. Um, so this is going to be higher. This is probably back up into the low 40s um, you know but VIX was kind of kind of hung I don't have the 200 day but the, the lows were put in right around the 200 day moving average and uh, you know it held it held great and it was telling us that there's probably more equity weakness ahead uh, dollar yen was another tell last week this was very obvious to me that something was not quite right with risk we were seeing some Things in the credit market, we were seeing things in the currencies. Um, and this is back on the, uh, this was Monday the 8th, where we had this big, you know, we had a nice big up move that whole previous week. And then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, um, dollar yen was really, really heavy. So this got our attention. This got us started getting us um, short some risky assets, yen crosses. Um, equities, that sort of thing. And, you know, it followed through pretty nicely and it, you know, had a big move. It went from 109, uh, I think it was like 109.90 almost. Yeah. And it got down to a low 106.56. 
Um, pretty subdued price action here on the open, even with equities lower. But I think equities are kind of just catching up to yen and the yen, uh, dollar yen and the yen crosses. Um, we are starting to see some signs of dollar strength the past couple days, which makes sense with um, the equity weakness. It's kind of a flight to quality there. You know, they've been buying bonds, they need dollars, so you're starting to see a bit of, you know, a little bit of a bid to the, the dollar. Here's cable, um, even dollar cad that had that, you know, this is one of our better trades of the <clears throat> of the quarter, getting short, um, you know, below this uh, big inflection point, this 138.50 area. Uh, it was a great trade, we covered a little bit too early, reversed, and then you see this big update Thursday. A little reversal Friday and we're back up and it looks like you know we could probably take out Friday's highs um, euro dollar um, still playing this on the long side but we we have this on the uh, some euro calls a couple months out uh, 114 114 50s on Wednesday it got up to 114 uh, 22 and then Thursday Friday reversed um, it's not doing much here on the open um, you know, there, there's definitely risk for this to pull back. I, I can see this pulling back to, you know, another 100 points or so, maybe down to this this area in here, 111, 40, 50. Um, but if equities are rolling over and they are correcting this dollar, there'll, there'll be a bid to the dollar. So just be aware of that. Um, Aussie, you know, parabolic run up. Um, we have been watching this trend line all week and I got really excited about being short Aussie. Think we were going to break on Thursday, and look, you know, it pretty much held the line. Um, then Friday reversed. Um, you know, we had taken out the line and then reversed and closed pretty much right on it. Now we've gapped open lower. Um, we're down three quarters of a percent, um, and that is if we close here tomorrow. That's a that's a. Uh, that's a good break. That's our, that, that, that to me looks like a, a good break. And then, you know, this 20 day, which has been, it's been respecting pretty well since April. Um, I think we can back and fill here. So why don't we run, this will be the same, you know, the same type of fit that we drew in, uh, in the stocks, but let's see where this can go. Since we've had, you know, we've had these parabolic moves, higher uh, with very little pullbacks um, this is a you know a really good fib swing it's a you know over from the march lows so we're talking about you know like a quarter three months in uh, in length um, that's got a long way to go just to get back just to retrace one third of the whole move is 64.75 so again this one will follow risk it'll follow equities whereas the euro will um, well, if the euro is going down, so dollar strength with equity weakness. Um, so why don't we look at Euro Aussie? Because this is this has been the one um, broke the 200 day, which isn't on this chart, but broke the 200 day, went back above it. You know, we had a nice big up move here on Thursday, and then reversal, a reversal like Friday. Now we're back above this 20 day, and look, you know, this this actually has been working pretty well, um, similar to the Nasdaq. Um, you know, here we spiked it, closed below it, spiked it, closed on it, back below it, a couple touches, spiked it below it, right off of it, closed right on it on Thursday, spiked above, closed below. Um, you know, so if we can start getting, you know, we need to see meaningful closes over this, not, not by a few pips, um, you know, more like. 50 pips then I gives me more confidence that we are entering a, a corrective more risk-off regime um, let's take a look at gold it's up tinies here just you know wants to go higher it held in there well with equity weakness which is good meaning the risk parity guys probably aren't as long of gold as they were during the March collapse where they sold everything um, you know, silver's pretty much trades opposite of the dollar. So silver has been going up really aggressively as the dollar weakened. Um, 
close in the 20 day. This has potential to correct a bit, even though we, we do like this longer term. We, we, you know, bigger picture, we still like a weaker dollar. I just feel like we're entering a period where it's gone a little bit too far too fast and we could see some dollar strength and some risk, um, risk off. Um, so those are the metals. Oil, I haven't really been paying that close attention to. I kind of lost interest in that. <laughs> when you see a chart like that, it's tough. Um, you know, if we pull up the weekly, weekly oil, that's unbelievable. Looking back, at it, again, it looks like it's kind of rolling over, and this is, you know, a barometer of risk. <clears throat> so um, let's look at copper, too. What's copper been up to? Nice move up with risk, with, you know, following equities tick for tick, and and the big down day Thursday, you know, maybe a break through these lows, 255, uh, what is that, 255.80? Looks like that <clears throat> we could get a pullback. Um, and that, that's a, obviously a risk barometer as well. So we're at 16 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, good luck trading this week. You'll hear from us on the uh, European Open. All the best. Cheers.